I wanted to talk about personal experience and your uh, conversation with Ocean recently. Mm. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, I was also mm-hmm. on uh, the Non Sequitur show. Yeah. Uh, where I spoke to a gentleman uh, whose name is Ocean, yeah. um, who believed in uh, Norse mythology. And so we had a nice long discussion about uh, epistemology and about whether or not it's a reasonable idea to believe in Thor and Odin as real people. Mm. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, well, what kind of questions did you have, William? Well, before I get to that, I just want to say that Jamie looks rather dapper. Doesn't he? Eric, you need to step up your game. No shit. Who the (laughs) hell would have thought that 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 was going to be something that would be said on Talk Heathen? Never. People underestimate my ability to dress. I know I did. Yeah. (laughs) Your original plan, because you see the way I dress every day, was, okay, we'll make it a thing. You'll dress down and I'll dress up and then that way we'll have an excuse for why you're dressed so casually. That was kind of the uh, excuse that I gave. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> now look at us. Yeah. Two. Okay. What's up, buddy? So, Break before I pat down, myself down to the ocean, though. Um, I, I felt like you were rather stumped when he, um, uh, when he brought up you know, all you can really do to, you know, gain knowledge is through personal experience. Like when you read a book, it's a personal experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I just want to know if you have any like um, thoughts since then, um, because I feel like he kind of got you on that. Yeah, well, you know, it I, it took me back and my response was um, that that reminded me of the Matt Slick argument. And we wound up changing course before I could finish my thought, um, but I'd love to give that now. So I I appreciate you calling in about it. Um, We have different kinds of evidence. There's inductive and deductive logic that we use. And when it comes to deductive logic, you know, true premises uh, will result in a sound conclusion. Um, And that generally works, you know, when you're talking about subjects like mathematics and more complex subjects so long as you can prove that the premises are true, right? Um, Mm -hmm. But we are limited as human beings uh, to have access to our own experience. And so it's easy to fall into that black swan fallacy of, you know, I've never seen a black swan, therefore there's no such thing as a black swan. Well, there is, you just haven't seen it, right? Um, And so... As human beings, we really need to work on our ability to attain knowledge, and we've done very well so far uh, by testing it and by showing those conclusions and by being open to the evidence, and we do the best that we can. We are able to get to deductive arguments um, through constant observation through measurement and through things like that. Mm -hmm. And so when Ocean would say, you know, Um, how are you able to come to knowledge without personal experience? I think it was putting the cart before the horse because really the important thing is, is, you know, is it justified to come to that conclusion and are you justified in saying that it is a true statement when you're formulating the premises for your argument, right? Yeah, um, I do feel like there's another, you know, thing that you're not really touching up on though. Sure, Um, what's up? As as far as personal experience, you know, what you're trying to justify with that personal experience, because like, you know, in his example, um, you know, personal experience of reading a book, well, you can hand that book to another person um, and they will read the exact same words, but they might ultimately feel differently about the same book. Mm -hmm. Um, So if you're trying to justify personal experience, well, I felt this way about uh, about this objective thing, and um, well, I felt this way about this objective thing. Um, you, You know, that's a that's a shared personal experience that two people can feel differently about. But when you start getting into stuff like prayer, suddenly that's that's an extremely subjective experience by nature I, I feel of, like, about how you felt with prayer. Yeah, I feel like just to quickly clarify, you can I can read a book and say, wow, this book is fantastic, and then hand that book to Eric, and he can say, wow, this uh, book is terrible, and we have different, you know, subjective uh, evaluations of its quality, but we're not going to disagree about what words are written in it because we can open it to page yeah. five right. and read it. So the fact claim portion of it... 
and 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 really, um, you're touching on it on a much more direct way, and I appreciate that because when it does mm -hmm. come to testing, it is much easier to test the existence of our hypothetical book mm -hmm. than it is to test the existence of, you know, a deity. You know, the yeah. evidence required yeah. to be able to say it is this deity versus that deity, it is this phenomena over that phenomena, you really, it takes a shit ton of evidence. And yeah. to put those things on the same level, oh, it's just like your personal experience, man. Like, no, <laughs> dude. Like, yeah. those things are vastly, vastly different as far as what is required to be able to accept it as justifiable and to be able to put that into a um, into a proposition, you know, that you can evaluate as true or false because there's just way more. You can point at books. You can't point at Thor. Yeah. That and, said. Yeah. I mean, oh, go ahead. Well, the the way I kind of think of it is, that I don't I don't inherently doubt the kind the personal experience that someone describes because a lot of crazy shit can happen in people's heads. For one reason or another, mm -hmm. um, what I doubt is the explanation they give for their personal experience. If it calls on magic thinking, that's yeah, because they're it's not because they're calling on things that it, aren't evident in reality. Just to go back to the black swan yeah. uh, fallacy, the reason that we know there are black swans is because we found them, not because someone argued. Oh, well, just because you've only seen white swans doesn't mean you can't have a swan of another color. Therefore, mm -hmm. it's reasonable for me to believe with no evidence that there is a black swan and that that black swan created the universe, right? It would mm -hmm. be less reasonable for a person, you know, before you found the black swan, for a person to say, hey, it's possible for birds to have different color feathers. Maybe there's a black swan out there is very different than it's possible that there's a bird with metal feathers that can create a universe because you're yeah. extrapolating into abstract and magical thinking, which has no demonstrable basis in reality. I mean, I feel like we're, we're sort of going over, we're retreading territory here, I think, in the same um, yeah. conversation. But the, the point remains, when you are talking about particularly things that are basically the understanding of what is real of the universe, you don't start with this large, fantastic idea of, for example, you know, a theory of relativity. You start by measuring the rate of acceleration on the surface of the Earth and then understanding the, you know, what composes matter and then understanding the composition of an atom and then understanding the composition of your solar system. Actually, I think I put those in the wrong order. But you start with small observable things and you build on knowledge that you already have. And no knowledge that we already have points to either a swan with feathers of steel or a magical being that creates things out of nothing. Mm -hmm. That said, it, I also if you, if you watch the discussion that I had with Ocean, um, I really deeply respect the amount of scholarship that Ocean has done on philosophy in general. Um, I absolutely would love to talk to him again. Um, the reasoning that he had behind the particular, you know, uh, theistic belief is one that just kind of rattles, you know, it, it, it's, it's so dissonant when you compare it to the vast level of scholarship that he has on philosophy that you could still have that level of, of uh, special pleading, you know, that was evident there. So if anybody who hasn't checked it out, uh, and if you haven't checked out the Non Sequitur show, do that. That's important. That's that's actually a really cool show. I really enjoy talking to those guys. Um, I'm glad you watched it. That was that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean it was a it was a it was a good watch and um, it was good learning about a different theistic perspective. Um, and I, I the other thing that I think is commendable along with um, his uh, scholarly beliefs and understanding of lore and whatnot is the community that he's built. Because that's that's super important. Uh, the with other well, I guess more appropriately named heathens. <laughs> um, hey, hey, hey! No, hey. no, no! That's our no. word now. Yeah. Hey, they earned the <laughs> <That's our word laughs> now. You guys have it. 
<laughs> you know what? Hey, They're nice enough people. We can share. Non-believers have been outcasts since it was cool to believe in Thor. All right, just saying. Not to go hipster, non-religious de- oh, yeah, designation. Oh, you're so hipster. Well, you always say that. You say that no matter what I do. Well, that's because I, I, you're, no. I want only one of us vapes. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, back to your actual. I was, I was a low blow, Jamie. It was a little low. Yeah. No. But yeah, no, that community is super important because I mean, those are, I, I think a fair number of those people based off of what he was saying are recovering from uh, probably um, more oppressive Christian households. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, also, I, I just want to throw in here, I'm taking a look at the chat. Um, I had said that it takes a shit ton of evidence. Um, Stan Gisea, yes, shit ton is a an accepted unit of measurement at this studio, and mm-hmm. it is uh, just above a shitload and just below a fuck ton. Yeah. Um, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. No, I that thought was, it was funny. That was a beautiful sentiment. I, right? I enjoyed it. <laughs> it's not metric, but it's still a good system. <laughs> yeah. It just makes just as God, much I sense as the imperial system. To figure we out a mm. name for that. Um... <laughs> um. <laughs> So, so well, I don't know if you guys want to get on to other callers or if you got uh, yeah. I, any I, other thoughts on this. I think we are going to move on yeah. this. Jamie, do you have anything else you wanted to add? No, I was just wondering whether it was going to go. I'm not sure whether you wanted to get on to other systems of measurement. I was going to say, well, that's a very different direction, but let's bring it. Did you know that a butt is actually a unit of measurement that's used? All right. With that said, yeah. uh, William, thank you so much for calling. Thank you for, yeah. for interacting and being yeah. a fan. We really appreciate it, man. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Have a have a great day, guys. Um, hopefully, you uh, have a good day on Father's Day with uh, you know mm. important figures in your life. Oh my have a good goodness! One. Yes, yeah. absolutely. You too. All right. Thanks for calling in. Go without God. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.